What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? T to the M to the I D D, and I am back with another video. This time, five mistakes that I see photographers make while they are out doing what they love to do, trying to create. Now, just for brevity in this video, I will use myself as an example to the things and mistakes that I often see. And a lot of these things happened when I was just beginning my journey into photography as we all make mistakes and probably seen these along the way. And I just want to pass this knowledge off to people who are just beginning as well as people who are currently in because we always make mistakes, but there is some good into making mistakes as well so without further ado let's jump right into it now one of the biggest mistakes that I see is building relationships with our subjects if you are a portrait photographer this is one of the biggest things that you can work on if you do not have a connection with your subject it is going to show in the images unless your subject is an introvert, I would still try to pull out some type of energy because the energy within a photo shoot resonates from the photographer to the model, subject, family, and it will be seen in your photo. So by any chance, you can crack a joke, you can find some similarities and have some discussion to put the model at ease that will make the photography session go so much better. So focus in on creating those relationships so that the process can go a lot smoother and you can see better results in your portraits. Now, the next thing with off camera flash or even with a, a reflector, because sometimes you can put a reflector on a stand where you don't necessarily have an assistant, but this is more crucial to those who are using strobes. We have these nice light stands that we like to put up, but on windy days, we have our soft box that become huge wind cells and they fall victim to being tilted over and a lot of times they can crack your strobe, flash, speed light, whatever you may have on that light stand can get turned over. I know that I've ran into this numerous of times and the easy fix for this a lot of the times is just having a sandbag to weigh it down. Very simple fix, but do we do it? We sometimes it's just lazy of us not to put a sandbag on our stand. Simple fix. So make sure you put those sandbags on your light stand. Now, the next one comes in with a reflector. Now this one, I believe it can be artistic and I think it comes along with shooting intentionally. Now there are rules to photography as we all know. And I like to say, once we have built the knowledge to understand the rules, then we can go along and break them because sometimes you can find yourself within bending rules. I can use several examples of where people went outside of the box that we paint and have these photography rules in and have found other avenues in their craft that people enjoy and they say that you know you're not supposed to do that in photography but once you understand those rules i feel like you can venture out and try something new this one goes to shooting with a reflector but using a reflector from underneath the golden rule with using a reflector is 
you are supposed to use it just like a softbox and replicate the way the sun would be angled. And typically the sun is at a high angle from above going down on your subject. So using a reflector to pop light back onto your subject from down below creates these harsh shadows and they kind of say it's more like a scary movie type of effect and it's not flattering. So so those types of things can be an acquired taste and aren't recommended however if you are shooting like that intentionally getting those type of harsh shadows on your subject then that is a different story but using a reflector like that and not intentionally using it then that can be a mistake now another way you could use it as just simply adding fill but not being your key light so keep that in mind when you use a reflector let's go into the next thing now the next thing may not come to you as a shock as well but composition is on our list and composition is so important the shot can be magnificent but if your composition is not where it needs to be in terms of where you have the subject relative to the location when you're shooting outdoors it will make the image a total disaster. Take this for example, I have the model framed beautifully. It is a beautiful image to say the least, but look at the head on this right here. Now, if I would have taken this and frame the model just a little bit so that the trees are not coming out of her head, then it would have made this image so much better. If I would have had just kind of a blue sky, then that would have been so much better. The subject looks beautiful, but the surrounding just makes it too much in this image. So make sure you are aware of your surrounding when you are composing your shot. Make sure that things like trees, things like uh, bridge poles, uh, lamps, uh, street lights, anything that can be sticking out of your subject head, try to avoid them coming out of your head because it does not look flattering at all. Now speaking of flattering, we are going to go into the last mistake that we see. Now harsh lighting is a skill using natural light is a skill so when you use natural light a lot of the times people can tell a pro from a beginner because a lot of the times you will see a beginner run directly to where you see harsh light right on your subject and that is far from what most pros do most pros will go backlit they will go even shade things like that now once you have experience with working with natural light and you understand how to get the look that you're going for then you can go into the direct harsh light because you know what you are going for but when you first start off you just think that oh if i have all of this natural light and this harsh light hitting my subject this is the shot that i want but it is not what you want be intentional about what you are shooting and make sure you have the right lighting for your shot make sure you are experienced to work with harsh light make sure you are intentionally shooting in harsh light if that is the look that you are going for so that is the five mistakes that i see beginner photographers make 
and sometimes even myself I'm lazy enough not to put a sandbag on my light stand so keep those things in mind if you would like to see another video dedicated to off-camera flash specifically on mistakes and natural light specifically um, with mistakes let me know in the comments below let me know some mistakes that you may have seen or you have experienced on your photography journey t to the m to the idd thank you for watching